race through this real quickly because I want to get beyond the tactics. Look, let me just put it this way, folks. It's really this simple. If you want to grow as a negotiator, I think you need to do a couple of things. Number one is keep doing a lot of the good negotiating you've been doing. There's a lot of people here that have flinched me, which told me that's not the first time you flinched. I want to encourage you to keep after. When you see somebody flinching you, do not let that influence you to an adverse uh, action on your part. Don't hesitate to crunch. Is that the best you can do? That's a great one. Uh, I've heard the phrase, you'll have to do better than that. My dad, an old redneck dairy farmer, I wish I had a nickel every time I told him when he said, do you have any wiggle room? Did you ever hear that one? Yeah. Have any wiggle room? His other favorite was, you're going to have to sharpen your pencil. He said, I, I, I watched him buy trucks and machine parts for his tractor and so on. How much is that? Well, you're going to have to sharpen your pencil if you want me to buy that. And that was what, one of those verbal cues that you're going to have to improve your price. And he wasn't belligerent about it. He wasn't mad at somebody. And you know what? We had friends in the machinery business that they said, hey, Dave, I'd be glad to do that, but you know, here's what this item cost me. And he'd say, well, if I buy a case of oil, can you do it? What would he do? He'd add more to the uh, more to the negotiating table. So I'll let you be the judge of whether you think those tactics will work for you. There are some tactics you may want to use. There are some tactics you may not want to use, but you need to learn about them so you can defend yourself. I'm not going to go into each of the tactics in the detail I did to flinch and the crunch. But there is a tactic called intimidation. I am not going to say it here. Matter of fact, I'm not even sure I put it in your outline. I did not, because I think it's a disgusting tactic. How many here know an intimidator? Anybody know an intimidator? I hate to say bad things about people, but I think intimidators are some of the sleaziest folks I've ever seen on the planet. They try to <coughs> bad mouth, they're crude, they're rude, they're disrespectful, and they do it to get their way. And you know what? Intimidators can be successful. I study intimidators. Not to become one, but to what? Defend myself in case I run into one. I'm blessed. I don't have to work with many intimidators. The nice thing about my business is, if I don't like somebody, I can just smile and say, see you later. But I know people, I'm speaking to a group in Austin, Texas next week. These are people that sell metal products, and they work with the same vendors all the time. If they get a lousy, intimidating vendor, guess what they have to do? they got to work with that individual whether they like it or not. So there are a lot of tactics we're not going to spend a lot of time on here. Uh, the crunch, getting a concession without getting one out, it doesn't always work. But how many think it puts the other party on their heels? Not to be abusive, they kind of let them know, hey, Mark, you may want to sell that base, but I'm not taking it home with five bucks. What can you do for me? And you, what might he come back with? Well, I'll tell you what, John, uh, if you pay me five bucks for that, I'll throw in the old lawnmower. And what's he thinking? It doesn't run. I was going to take it to the dumpster anyhow. You know, it could be a... You've seen package deals like that. <clears throat> as far as the paper crunch, is that the best you can do? What is bracketing? Bracketing. <coughs> bracketing is sending out <coughs> controlling expectation messages. Some of you may know them as anchors. Can I give you one? Oh, I can't sell it for it. He says, I can't sell it for less than $5. We paid $5 for it. Well, guess what my thought is? You overpaid for it. I've had a car dealer say that to me. My son down in Florida was buying a used car. And the car dealer said, uh, my son, I think it was, it was listed for like $13.9. And my son offered $10.9. And the guy flinched, oh, 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 we can't do that. He said, I had to pay, I had to pay uh, 13 dollars to buy that car. That was a bracket. After an hour or two of negotiation, my son walked away with the car at 12 3 How many think the car dealer lost money? Gee, he didn't. That 13 dollars was simply what? Something he said. Right now in the real estate market, how many people, how many homes that are worth less than they paid for them? And they say, well, I can't sell it for that. I paid this for it a couple years ago. I said, well, a couple years ago, you could have sold it for that. Today, it's somewhere else. Anchors, brackets, 
They send out messages. And these messages really communicate what people are looking for, written or oral. I was talking to Chris and Jimbo from Montana. My son-in-law is in the excavating business in, uh, in Eureka, Montana. He buys equipment at around $250,000, big excavator. He bought one recently from a guy in Seattle. And my son-in-law is a former banker. He just couldn't stand bankers. He said, I've got to be outside, so he went into the excavating business. So he went online, found an excavator he wanted in Seattle. He found out the price was $250,000. So went to his bank, arranged a loan, and got $250,000. But he asked his banker, he says, I would like to have it in three checks. One for $220,000. Another for 20 and another for 10. You got what he did? He's got three checks. You could send a bracket message by what you say or what you write. A check is a very good bracket. So he went to all the way to Seattle, drove eight hours to Seattle, looked at the excavator. You know, operated, see if it worked. He says, you know, this, this worked good for me. He says, how much do you want for this? How many think he's face to face now? The guy says, well, as you saw online, it's 250. What do you think my son-in-law did? How about the one-two punch? He said, wow, you know, you know, the business really slowing down. Uh, is that the best you could do? And the guy says, well, I, I, uh, I could probably let it go for 240. How many think he gained $10,000 by doing what? A flinch in the crunch. What's he thinking right now? Well, I'm not going to need, I'm only going to need two of my checks. Now, if he had bought a check for $250, it would have been kind of embarrassing to ask for a discount when he got the check there. And, and he said, well, is that the best you can do? He said, I can get down to 240 He says, well, I don't think I can go to that. He says, here's what I brought with me. And he gave him the first check, which was what? 220 I'm going to think the guy looked at the check and flinched. Whew, you know, I can't accept that. I got to have more than that. And he says, "Well, I kind of thought you'd say that, so I brought along ten more. Would that work?" That went to two thirty. And he says, I, "He says I think that's about all I can move on that." And the guy went along with him for two checks. Now, how many think it wouldn't have worked if he hadn't had the checks right there in front of him? So there's a lot of strategy needs to play. Of course, I have.